What's going on, fellas? Today, just a special day. Today, I'm Bini, and uh, okay, just as a sign of respect. <laughs> Never been a Bini so far, but there is the first time for everything. Excuse me, there is the first time for everything, right? And uh, yeah, today I'm a Bini, so just need to share it on Twitter, and I'm gonna elaborate my decision why I believe uh, why I believe uh, it was a robbery so uh, one second Lucia Pudilova versus Jocelyn Edwards was a robbery Edwards was a robbery and much more okay i tweeted fine so fellas right now to say first of all lucia pudelova was facing her up for two rounds and have you seen have you seen how dominant lucia pudelova looked she looked extremely dominant and uh, in the first two rounds she was even raining ground and pound punches of the top and when you're raining uh, strikes of the top you got to win the round because damage is parameter number one while i can say in uh, round three while i can uh, questionably say in uh, round three that there is a chance that uh, she won the that she won the round i can say i can say i can say that uh, i believe Round three was close, but I can give it to Jocelyn Edwards. But like the first two rounds, does it make sense to you? Does it even make sense to you? No. I rewatched like two or three times. No fucking way. There's no fucking way. I'm telling you. No way Jocelyn Edwards won a single round out of those two. I am pretty much confident that Jocelyn Edwards didn't win a single round out of those two, and uh, I think it was one of the worst fouls made by the judges because Lucia Pudelova outstruck her, outgrappled her, and uh, all those punches, all those strikes. I mean, we can't say Jocelyn Edwards started the uh, stuff in takedowns in the third round, but in uh, round two, round one, no, I was yelling, I was going wild in those rounds because uh, Jocelyn Edwards was pretty much having a hard time slipping out of the position and uh, she was hitting, she was totally getting dominated in the first two rounds. We've seen zero takedown defense. Literally, we've seen zero takedown defense on uh, her end and uh, yeah, I put uh, this uh, cap because of uh, the MMA guru as a sign of respect. And yeah, I am Beanie Cowboy today only. So this is a special edition Beanie Cowboy, yes. But uh, I wanted to say there is no way. Like I'm saying, it's one of the worst uh, robberies I have ever seen. Like when you have clean two rounds, it would have been the same like uh, if they ruled uh, Azamat Murzakano versus Dustin Jacobi in the favor of Dustin Jacobi. When it was clean that Azamat uh, won two rounds. And Lucia Pudilova was dominating in grappling exchanges. She was raining punches of the top in the first two rounds. It's true that she didn't score a knockdown, just like Azamat Murzakano scored a knockdown in uh, round one and uh, round two. But it's true that Lucia Pudilova didn't score a knockout, but she dominated in grappling exchanges. She dominated in uh, all kinds of other exchanges. And uh, it was clean that she won two rounds. Now, when I rewatch today, I've seen that uh, it was one of the worst fouls, one of the worst robberies that were ever made in the history of this sport. And it was like clean to one, can't get cleaner than that. I remember robberies when we were, where we were having uh, the case of 3 uh, 0 that turned into 3 0 for the losing opponent. And uh, I mean, uh, Vera St. Hagen cannot be a robbery because it was a split, but. Imagine uh, Marlon Vera winning that fight, and one judge gave the fight to Marlon Vera. It was horrible, right? And all those judges, they were pretty much high when they gave a split decision to 
Jocelyn Edwards sve mučio podelovao Dominated. Like uh, same in the case of Peter Young versus uh, Sean O'Malley. This kind of reminded me of Peter Young versus Sean O'Malley, but this one was more obvious. This was more obvious example of a robbery. And uh, TDD, control time. Like Peter Young, he took down Sean O'Malley, but he didn't make a significant amount of damage on the bottom. And Lucia Pudilova made a significant amount of damage on the bottom. And she really punished her opponent well. She really unloaded some big, big strikes on her opponent. And uh, I got to say that she really scored some vicious, vicious takedowns. And uh, she really dominated, totally dominated. And I don't know. I don't know what was in the mind of uh, those judges. I really don't know what was in the mind of uh, those judges who gave the victory to Jocelyn Edwards when Lucia Pudilova won two rounds uh, fair and square. Pretty much won two rounds fair and square. One second, please. All right, sorry, fellas. Just something. No big deal. Anyway, what I want to say, this fight was a massive, massive robbery. I'm like, I don't even know why, man. I don't know why are you robbing so obvious. Like, if you rob somebody when it's a close fight and you can't criticize, I'm fine with that. But I can't be fine with a clean victory that turned into a robbery. I can't be fine with that. Nobody normal should be fine with that. Like, imagine imagine when somebody wins fair and square. And then, out of nowhere, you say, well, it was not a victory. And why it was not a victory? Well, only God knows why. Only God knows uh, why it was uh, not a victory. But it was not a victory. To some judges, to some guys, it was not a victory. I don't know who was uh, refing. I don't know, I know who was refing, but I don't know who, who were judges in that fight. But I can say UFC is turning into boxing, turning into WWE. We've seen more and we're seeing more and more high judges. And we're seeing more and more judges who have uh, who have no idea of uh, proper judging, who really need uh, who really need to take part in some classes, in some judging classes. Maybe they need to learn the rules. I mean you can see the rules uh, wherever you want, let's be honest. You can really see the rules wherever you want. And uh, Just type UFC rules, rule book is going to appear. And today, everybody can be the judge. If you use your mind, if you use the power of your mind, you can be the judge. But if you don't use the power of your mind, well, if you don't use the power of deduction, that's like, that's a problem. That's a problem. Like, is it hard to conclude that Lucia Pudilova won that fight fair and square? No, it's not. It's pretty much easy to conclude that she won the fight. Every single time when you rewatch, every single time when you count strikes, and every single time uh, when you count when you count takedowns, aggressiveness, cage control, take any parameter you want. She won the fight. She didn't lose. There's no fucking chance she lost that fight. And when you're thinking, I'm like, man, just man. No, she did not lose. She did not lose. She did not lose, man. I can't confirm the fact that she lost because uh, she didn't lose. Like, no matter how many times I rewatch the fight, I will always have the same conclusion. It was a clean victory, and Lucia Pudilova was robbed. It was a brutal robbery. Like, I believe it was a brutal, brutal robbery. And, uh, I don't know, shame on judges. On every single fight card, we have a robbery. I don't know why, man. Sometimes, if it's a close fight, you can't argue. But if it's not a close fight, then you can argue all the way. Then you can protest all the way. Then you're leaving... Uh, some space for the potential protesting and for the potential calls, scorecards, and no, 
that simply didn't go well. And yeah, today I'm being a cowboy. Please shoot in with questions, fellas. If there is somebody looking, uh, watching, I'm always eager to answer to your questions and to fulfill the answers, to complete the answers. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping we are going to discover the answer together and the uh, truth. Telling you, the truth is out there. The truth is really out there. And uh, I'm having a feeling that uh, tonight, having a feeling that tonight is going to be our night. We are going to find uh, some answers. We are going to reveal some answers. But I don't get why judges like to rob uh, honest fighters. Like their, their job is to fight. Imagine like, imagine like Pudilova had to, like we, when we're discussing fight presses, if she would have won more money if she if she exited uh, the octagon with her hand raised and she didn't leave the octagon victorious. Imagine how hard could it be. It's a fatal blow for the athlete and I understand why Pudilova didn't want to shake hands. I wouldn't want to shake hands in the first place if I was in uh, her position. Now nobody is talking about this fight. Like, literally nobody is talking about this fight. People are like, they don't want to care because it's not the main event, it's not the main event. But I hate, I hate when we when we see robberies. I hate people, the fact there are tons of robberies. And the most important fact now is Charles Oliveira versus Ben Oderius being pushed to UFC 289. That is fine. I am very much okay. Very much okay with that. And also, uh, the hot news is the fact uh, that uh, ex-UFC fighter Carl Robertson is arrested and charged in connection to jewelry robbery. I don't, uh, I don't see it. You know, I don't see it as a problem. You know, I'm not surprised. And morning report: Charles Oliveira fight now targeted for UFC 289 versus Ben Alderius. Promise title shot and pay bump. Pay bump and title shot. Oh, pay bump and title shot. For what, man? For delaying? For postponing? I mean, okay, man, you postpone the fight. But if somebody postpones the fight, why would you give him a pay bump? Because you are rewarding his horrible behavior. You should never reward somebody's horrible behavior. That's, that's what I think, you know. Never reward horrible behavior. Always reward good behavior. Imagine somebody accepting the fight on a short notice. Reward him. Give him more money. Give more money for his kiddos, for his family. And now, when somebody pulls out of the fight and then pushes the fight back to some other event, you give him monetary reward. Does it make sense? No. Makes no sense. Perfectly makes no sense. To me at least. I would have never rewarded somebody who pulled out of the fight or, or pushed it back. It makes no sense to me. It's pointless. Really much pointless. Majority of those things are pointless. UFC is definitely protecting some guys and hating the others. For example, they hate Said Yakub, Kakramono, and uh, Will Brooks retired after submission win at Titan FC 81. I don't know whether it's... Uh, a good or bad call, but he knows when it's enough. Also, Dana White was pissed off after Craig with a fake retirement to get post-fight interview at UFC Kansas City. Hmm. How does that sound? Dana White expects Israel Adesanya to fight soon. Real opponent sought for Alex Pereira at light heavyweight. Hmm. I don't know whether this is a good decision. Uh, favorite promotion besides the UFC. Uh, favorite promotion besides the UFC is going to be mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hard question PFL maybe maybe gonna be PFL but I have many promotions that I love I'm gonna say Cage Warriors because I'm watching Cage Warriors at Fight Pass every single Cage Warriors I'm watching and the many young guns are traveling back there but i'm also a diehard fan of cage warriors and uh, i also like i also like rsfc i think rsfc is a very very much underrated promotion 
I really think RSFC is a very, very much underrated promotion. So, yes, the two of them. And, yeah, Cage Warriors, PFL and RSFC, those three. But if I must pick one, I would win Cage Warriors. Like, I know Cage Warriors is underpaid. That is uh, one of the problems with Cage Warriors. The promotion is pretty much underpaid. But uh, it's the easiest way to get uh, into the UFC aside of Dana White Contender Series. But you need an invitation for Dana White Contender Series, which kind of sucks. And for this promotion, you don't need invitation. Like for Cage Warriors, it's way, way easier to hint onto the scene, to get onto, to get the public, uh, to get a shot uh, to fight in public. Cage Warriors is giving uh, way more freedom. For example, win three or four fights in Cage Warriors and they are going to let you fight for the title, even if you are a totally unknown fighter. If you extend like three, four, five wins, they are going to let you fight for the title. And that is one of the fastest routes to the UFC. For example, Modestus Bokowskis is a perfect case of uh, winning a Cage Warriors title. Then uh, losing like one, three in the UFC, getting discharged, getting this grant to Winning Cage Warriors title back to back, defending it, and then he finished into the UFC again. Now he is number 35 at Cage Warriors. He is number 35 now. So, how does that sound? He is number 35 at the world. And I have a feeling uh, that he is doing a lovely, lovely job. And uh, I'm having a feeling that he is going to enter. He is going to be even greater, even better. I'm having a feeling that Modestus Bukowskis is going to become a ranked opponent very, very soon. It's just a matter of time. Like, he defeated Tyson Pedro on a short notice, but it depends on who's going to be his next opponent. They didn't let him fight Paul Craig, though. Great, hey, thanks for the answer. Wish PFL grows and starts to give some competition to the UFC. Can't see any other promotion doing it as of now, but PFL has some good strategy. Well, their paychecks are brutal. Like, imagine Ante Delia earning a million dollars. Why would he ever transition to UFC? He earned a million dollars, man. And let's be honest, uh, PFL opponents are uh, way stronger. Some of them are way stronger than UFC opponents. You got some uh, guys in the PFL who would never transition to the UFC because they are, uh, they are earning uh, way more money. They are, uh, they are getting uh, paid uh, more. So, yeah, PFL is having some really decent strategy, and, uh, but it's not easy to bump on the scene in PFL. It's not easy to get a chance to compete. That's one problem. That's one of the problems in PFL. You've got to be a name or some kind of, uh, or some kind of a famous guy to get a chance to fight at PFL. It's not that easy like uh, in Cage Warriors. In Cage Warriors, they are ready to sign a guy with OO. In PFL, if you're all old, you're not going to get a shot. If you're all, uh, one old, two old, you're how, you will hardly get a shot to compete. They don't want to give a chance to anybody. And uh, I hope PFL is going to grow. And another downside of PFL is the fact that it airs on DSDN. It is not included in the UFC and Fight Pass or ESPN Plus, which kind of sucks. Which kind of sucks. It means you can't watch every single one, but... The fact I don't like about PFL, I'm going to tell you, there is one, that electronic cage is fine, that is fine, but you are wasting tons of, uh, you are wasting so much time between the fights and uh, it's irritant, sometimes it's uh, very, very irritant and people, people won't be keen on sitting and watching fights uh, when, uh, when the break between the fights is like half hour or, I understand that electronic cage is helping, but... You can't base everything on an electronic cage. You got to speed it up. And paychecks are brutal. Paychecks in PFL are brutal. I understand that PFL is having some of the greatest PF, uh, some of the greatest paychecks in the world. But definitely, PFL deserves uh, deserves a shot. And I hope PFL is going to overtake UFC. I'm <clears throat> going to overtake UFC in the years to come. But it can only happen with a very good strategy. Can't happen with a good strategy. It can only happen with a very, very, very good strategy. That's one and only way because good strategy isn't gonna work. Very good strategy might work. How much do follow amateur fights and prospects worldwide 
has some cool names that you think will make a breakthrough, breakthrough in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do know some guys who might uh, who might make a breakthrough in the future. Some cage warriors guys. Will Curry. I know he lost uh, he lost the fight to Mick Stanton, but that guy is only 24 and he got a shot to fight for the belt. I think Will Curry is pretty much underrated prospect. And the current 155 pound champion, I uh, believe Lee Hardwick, I think Lee Hardwick, that guy is a diehard potential. He could make a quick breakthrough. These two guys are the guys to pay attention to. One FC is a problem in general because one FC fighters mostly reject to ink uh, for the UFC. Also, there is some kind of a strict policy with Bellator, so we can ignore those promotions. And fighters rarely transition from PFL to UFC because, like, they are a competition, and it's obvious that they don't like each other. That's the that's the fact. But uh, I would pinpoint to Will Curry and uh, believe his name is Lee Hardwick. He recently won last Cage Warriors. He was fighting in the main event and won the fight, won the fight fair and square. These two guys are very much great prospects from Cage Warriors that might build a very, very great careers. And RSFC, uh, I forgot the name of the guy. I forgot one, one guy is a heck of a prospect, but I forgot his name. I think he's out of Marseille. He's out of Marseille. I think he was born in Dagestan, but he is fighting under the flag of France. I forgot his name. Yeah, George Hardwick is good. George, George Hardwick is amazing. It's not Chumbayev. How is his name? Oof. Uh, Chamsudinov. Chamsudinov. Yes, Chamsudinov. That is the guy, Chamsudinov. Chamsudinov, uh, that is the guy I wanted to pinpoint to. Yes, Chamsudinov is one of the of the greatest prospects in RSFC. He could see UFC cage uh, really, really soon. So these are the prospects to pay attention to. And RSFC is uh, one of very much underrated promotions. Aside of that, I don't know. EFC, I'm not a fan of EFC. Like, I can follow it. United Arab Emirates Warriors, I don't like the promotion because the majority of their fighters inks to Brave CF. And you've seen Gerald Silavi, who came from Brave CF and, did, and didn't do well at PFL. So, yeah, it's like RSFC and uh, Cage Warriors, according to my mind, are going to give you the greatest chances to transition to the UFC. I believe the move to the UFC is the easiest to make from those two promotions. And RSFC is doing an amazing job too. Yes, Chamsudino, that's the guy. Yes, the guy out of Marseille. Great, I watched uh, Juan Davis lately. He won the fight Saturday on Cage Warriors. Very aggressive fighter. Of course, I've seen him. But I was shocked with his performance. I was shocked because I was expecting a hard fight, a close fight, and he won pretty much easy, fair and square, easy, squeezy. His, uh, his record is still, how to say, for UFC, you need a better record. Like, Davis doesn't have the greatest record, but he hasn't fought big names yet. Is he a prospect? He is, but like that guy, if he wins, I believe, uh, two more fights, they're going to let him fight for the title. Two, three more wins, and he'll get a title shot for sure. And Yuan Davis, yes, yes, I think the guy is a very, very big prospect and he deserves a lot of attention. I might be having one interview coming up soon, but it's not confirmed officially, officially not confirmed. So I don't want to hint anything until it happens. Yeah, I don't do many of the interviews though, but sometimes I really like to enjoy. Sometimes I really, really like to enjoy, you know. I was doing interviews more. Uh, I was doing more interviews earlier, but right now I'm just having too many obligations with other stuff. And I hope I will pull out another interview tomorrow. But it's just 50-50. So hope everybody are going to enjoy. And anyway, I believe uh, UFC fights are uh, getting. Um, more are getting more and more quality, but these judges, these judges are horrible. I don't know. Open scoring system could resolve the puzzle. 
open scoring system could be a solution because like with open scoring everybody is going to see whether you are robin or not and when you see the stats you know in multi view and sometimes at fight pass you can check the stats that only counts for ufc for cage warriors for other fc they are not shown in the stats but the problem with the stats is uh, when you see the stats in public you are going to see whether the judge uh, was stealing or not whether the fighter was robbed or not in this case scenario i hate robberies and um i will never i will never accept the fact that uh, some fighters uh, get robbed for no reason i'm definitely against it and i don't know why they robbed Lucia Pudilova in the first place i don't know maybe because she lost to Liz Karmush. maybe because they think this is her second ufc run and maybe because they think she didn't deserve it I don't know, nor I want to think about it. But I just want to say, Uchiha Pudilova, no. She was robbed. Belal versus Burns. I think this is too hard fight for Gilbert Burns. As a diehard fan of Burns, I don't see him winning that fight. I would have to give it to Belal. I like Kazakhstani fighters. Do you know any good prospects from there? You have just signed that great flyweight Azat Maksum. Believe Kazakhstan has some great crop. The only prospect from Kazakhstan that I know is Azat Maksum, but you have just uh, mentioned him. So I only know that I only know that prospect from Kazakhstan. But he well, let's see, he's not proven yet in the UFC. I mean, it was the same situation. Uh, I believe the guy who lost uh, Kusein Ashkabu, he lost to Jamal Emers. He was undefeated 23 0, then he lost. Azat Maksum is a heck of the prospect. So let's see. Really? Yes, unfortunately, I don't see Gilbert Burns winning that fight. And I'm a diehard fan of Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns has no chances to submit Bilal Muhammad. That's a problem because Muhammad's submission defense is very, very good. I don't think he can out wrestle him, but he is. Uh, uh, there is one good thing for Gilbert Burns in that fight. He is better in leg kicks and he is better in close range punches. So he would have to keep the fight standing if he wants to win. But. Ah, uh, man. With these horrible judges, if Belal holds him down, he's gonna win. That's the problem with these horrible rules and judges. More power to great analysis. Uh, more power, yes, more power in strikes, but Belal has unfortunately more power in wrestling and more technicality in wrestling. Yeah, that, that worries me, that really worries me. I would like to see Gilbert Burns win in that fight, but unfortunately, I would pass this, that fight, you know, if you ask me, Vlad, would you bet that fight? No, not betting. I don't think Belal wants to grapple with Burns. I want Gilbert uh, to win that fight. Definitely won't, but as a diehard fan of Gilbert, I think that's a too hard fight. Damir Smogulov is a beast, said he retired. Yeah, unfortunately, Damir Smogulov retired, you are right. Have you seen that Carl uh, Robertson is arrested? something uh, something related to jewelry robbery have you seen that i was like what the heck when i seen that i was so much shocked and surprised never expected something like that to happen but okay ufc fighters get arrested uh, from time to time like it's normal but those kind of robberies are ruining the sport like uchia, uchia pudilova versus joslin edwards uchia pudilova didn't even want to shake hands and i understand the rage and frustration Imagine you train your whole life for somebody to rob you. You win two rounds fair and square and judges say that you lost a split decision. I mean, how? How in that could, you, could, have she, could she lost a split decision? That's, that's impossible. That's literally impossible. That split decision was, was like, I don't know. I just don't know. On every card we have a questionable call, but... I understand, uh, I understand somebody making a mistake when it's a close fight. That's okay. In a close fight, we can make a mistake. Anybody can. But in a fight that's not close to make such a mistake, I don't know. You have to be high for such mistakes and to make such mistakes. You definitely have to be high or you have to be crazy or uh, whatever. You name it. I don't know how would I call those judges. I could only say horrible, horrendous judges. One of the worst judges the world has ever seen. What can I say about that? Some things are pretty much horrible. 
with this uh, judging and yeah unfortunately i see Belal winning and you know that i'm not the greatest fan of that guy you know that i'm not the greatest fan of uh, that guy and uh, yeah yeah that is that is something i will never understand because but okay it's the part of the game right anything is a part of the game in ufc you must be ready to robberies you must be ready to lose that's why you should uh, you should go for the finish every single time that's why you should try to finish your opponent by any means necessary because if you don't go for the finish then judges might rob you and uh, what did you do you did not just lost the fight because of someone else's mistake but losing the fight because somebody someone else made a mistake it's it's one of the worst defeats you can have because you know that you did nothing wrong you pushed yourself over the limit and uh, someone else didn't want you to win that's that hurts no those losses hurt I understand fighters who lose that way those losses hurt they are very very much hard to make uh well uh, thoughts on Shavkat. how good is he in your opinion champion potential definitely champion potential looking like a perfect fighter as of now able to keep it standing with good grapplers and outstrike them comfortably i think Shavkat is a championship potential no joke well being able to dominate in the clinch and grappling with strikers uh, his fight IQ is uh, very much on point, got to say. His fight IQ is pretty much uh, on point. And I think Shavkat, I've seen him training with Kamaru Usman, and uh, I believe Shavkat is very good, well-rounded fighter. I think any any fighter at 170 is going to have a hard time with Shavkat. So I see Shavkat as a potential championship uh, material. Uh, potential, okay, potential. I'm not going to say he will become the champ or not become the champ, but top five for sure, top three, 80%, number one contender, 70%, champion, let's say 60, 65. That division is stacked with good fighters and I can't throw other fighters. I can't uh, downgrade, I, I can't downgrade other fighters, so... Uh, that's why I cannot uh, I cannot say that Shavkat is 100% going to be the champion because the division is really stacked. You got Leon Edwards, you got Kamar Usman, you got Wonderboy Thompson who can be really really dangerous, really dangerous. You've seen what he did to Kevin to Kevin Holland. You got Gilbert Burns. We mustn't write Gilbert Burns off. He can defeat the best. I hope Kamzachi Maev never returns to 170, but you never know. Then Hooker versus Tony Ferguson could still happen. I know. I would really like to see that fight happen. That would be one of the greatest victories for the sport if that fight comes to fruition. That would have been some of the greatest victories for the sport. And are you eager to see that fight? Because I am. I'm very much interested in that fight. And I believe that fight is going to be one of the best fights the world has ever seen. So if you're asking me, yeah, I am uh, very much. I'm very much interested in seeing that fight, Dan Hooker versus Tony Ferguson. But I don't want to see Ferguson uh, retiring uh, with a loss, so just give him easier opponent, and that's it. What about Bonicle's potential? Hard to measure as of now. Hard to measure as of now because we've seen only a grappling side of Bonicle. What's going to happen if somebody stops his takedowns? Now, that's a million dollar question. What's going to happen if somebody circles like for example israel adesanya imagine israel adesanya fighting bonicle bonicle would have a hard time dragging that fight to the ground and uh, i don't think he has a good chances of dragging adesanya to the ground so that is uh, that is another problem that is another big problem for uh, easy for like uh, for bonicle because we know that he is a top-notch grappler but how about striking exchanges how about punching how about firing back uh, at the people? Well, uh, we haven't seen that part of him. I would really want to see that part of the him. I would really want to see that part of the game. Hello, Otis. Carl Robertson rested for home robbery of 2 okay. 
I've seen, I was thinking it's something related to jewelry robbery, but yeah, yeah, it's a home robbery too. Yeah, I completely forgot it's it had something to do with home. I was thinking related to jewels, but uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen that 200k, it was like, I was very much, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not that much shocked because uh, UFC, UFC fighters and former UFC names, uh, they get arrested from time to time, it doesn't shock me. Hey, Steven, how are you doing? It's doing great. I'm so glad because you're still awake, man. I'm so so glad you're still awake. And uh, one of the one of the one of my greatest supporters. Thank you so much, man. And thank you for motivating me in these in these uh, black days, in these very very cold days when I'm injured. When I'm like, you're one of my greatest motivations. Yes, I've seen that Carl Robertson got arrested. It's I'm not much surprised because like UFC fighters, I've seen like when somebody says somebody got arrested, I didn't expect that from Robertson, but I'm not shocked. I'm far from shocked. I was actually shocked when uh, War Machine got arrested, you know, uh, the adult film actor and the UFC fighter. War Machine, Jan Kopenhauer, I, I was actually very much shocked when he got arrested. And when I've seen uh, what he did to Christy Mack, I was like, I was thinking that's a mistake. I was thinking he was, I was thinking everything was framed. I was thinking it was a massive setup, but Bonnie or well, Gregory Rodriguez would be a good fight to see where both uh, level is. Well, he can't out grapple Rodriguez. We know that he can't out grapple Rodriguez, so we would see his level if he squares off against Bonico. Thanks for words. No problem, fella. I am just being honest. Thoughts in Israel, Adesanya. If he beats, uh, uh, if he beats uh, a guy like Hamzat, that means he's top five all-time IMO. Means he can uh, uh, beat every style. I'm very impressed by that guy. I think he can beat anybody. Yeah, I did sued him. I sued him. I sued him on Panchovo. I sued him Do you lift uh, knee fast before tip or fast? Uh, yes, fast. You need to raise, uh, you need to raise uh, tip. Uh, you, ne you need to raise uh, your knee very, very fast. Mislim, sad ne sudim jer sam povređen, ali... Neću bataliti, nadam se, ne skoro. Anyway, uh, tip, uh, lift your knee fast. Prešao sam ja u pančevo iz godinu dana. Uh, a povređen sam, a hilo utetivo sam iskidao to. Dugo sam već, ima jedno 3-4 meseca. Imam i gips na nozi, pa ništa strašno. Do you lift knee fast before tip? Uh, you need to lift uh, your knee fast. Yes, just. I'm gonna show you with this, like, see? Like this, Colin. Like this. You see that? If you go like this, it's not optimal speed. Lift fast, then push, return, and the reverse. Sorry, I have a cast on my other leg. Who is the GOAT in your opinion? John Jones. John Jones, two division champion, and very easy win over Cyril Gunn. I think John Jones is the GOAT. Mm, yes, John Jones is an easy guy. He's an easy guy. Mm, easily for me, John Jones is the GOAT. Like when you're watching who won titles in two different weight classes and who dominated. DJ, okay, DJ. Ah, DJ, Demetrius Johnson, yes, yes. But Demetrius Johnson was uh, ignored by the UFC. UFC never liked that guy. Thoughts on Tuivasa moving to beer weight. As expected. I'm not shocked. Not surprised at all. Bonico versus Andre Petrovsky. What a great match of potential. Petrovsky is a brutal wrestler. I think Bonico would have a hard time against him. I didn't expect that Andre Petrovsky is such a great wrestler. Understood. Yes, yes, no problem, Steven. Please shoot in with questions. I'm always willing to respond. DJ, yes, Demetrius Johnson. He is, uh, I believe he defended the flyweight title 11 times. And Anderson Silva, Spider Silva is the GOAT. But the problems are GSP also. GSP won titles in two different weight classes. But yeah, I agree with the, Yes, yes, but the problem with DJ is the fact that UFC has never loved the guy. They never liked DJ. And uh, when I say why... I don't know. DJ has never been too entertaining for the world of UFC. He has never been a trash talker. His humble personality, 
his humble personality was a perfect choice for maybe maybe one fc and he's having a great run at one fc but ufc doesn't like trash talkers ufc doesn't like guys who don't throw he has never been a throw do you lift me on normal roundhouse you lift me on every but every single strike you must lift your knee high so even even on a calf kick you must lift me yes i'm lifting me on normal roundhouse yes yes on calf kick yes on calf kick you must lift but there is another type of calf kick where you don't have to lift uh, your knee if it's not a multi slasher if you just this calf kick then you don't have to lift the knee but if you really want to slash your opponent like if you really want to do like a multi version then you have to lift to, to lift it high calf kick is a bit tricky there are two variations of calf kick in one variation of calf kick you raise your knee like this in other variation you raise a bit you lift it a very very little so it depends but unfortunately i'm injured now but as soon as uh, as soon as i'm able to train as soon as i'm able to to showcase i will show you how it looks like but uh, always lift your knee up that is uh, that is my piece of advice always but always lift your knee up because i'm 100 percent sure that uh, that uh, it will increase the power of your strike and that will uh, that it will boost the power of your strike and also the opponent will have a hard time blocking oh thanks a lot steven now it's time to remove the beanie i don't have the hair today thanks a lot steven anyway uh only today i'm wearing a beanie normally i wear this uh, but i'm wearing this today in the honor of the mma guru i'm normally wearing this so today in the honor of the mma guru a guy who saved the uh, who saved uh, Bernie, Beanie Vladster. Yeah, Beanie. Ah, today I'm wearing a Beanie in the honor of the MMA guru, the guy who saved, uh, who saved uh, my month. Now, the guy sent me 200 quid to, to cover, uh, to cover uh, my expenses. Do you think uh, Topuria can become champ in the future? Yes, yes, I'm pretty much confident. Uh, actually, actually, mm, Beanie looks better. Thank you, but this is guru style. I pre uh, I have to carry a hat or a cap because of my sponsor. So I have a contract, so I must carry that. I know Bini looks nice, but contract is contract. Only today I can do it. Uh, I will tell you more details on Instagram because there are some things I'm not allowed to reveal in public. Uh, yes, Topuria can become the champ. What I wanted to say, Topuria could actually have a hard time against Alex Volkanovski. And he could have a hard time against Yair Rodriguez. But can he become a champ? Yes, the guy is definitely with championship potential. Top three contender, 100%. Champion, 70-75. I mean, if uh, uh, the Russian will win heavyweight gold, there is a chance, man. Pavlovic is so great. Pavlovic is so great, man. I think Pavlovic is going to smoke out uh, Blades. And have you seen that Pavlovic is the underdog in that fight? Yeah, have you seen that Pavlovich is the underdog in that fight? I was like, what the heck? Is this some kind of a sick joke? I got to rewatch that, but it seems he's an uh, underdog in that fight. Tomorrow I'm going to prop you up. Sergey Pavlovich plus 1 for all. What the heck? What the heck? Sergey Pavlovich one plus uh, 1 for all. I think it's worth putting my money. I'm definitely going to put some money on Pavlovich. Uh, tough Osman is a pick -em. Marshall Gomez, Karen Silva. I'm definitely going to put some money on Pavlovich. What do you think? Like plus one for all. It's like I was like, what the heck? Plus one for all. The guy with the heaviest hands in the division is the underdog against Curtis Blades. I mean, Curtis Blades is a great fighter, but Pavlovich has some of the best TDDs in the game. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't know why, why, just why he's the why he's the underdog. What is the what is the point behind it? What is the point behind it? Why is he such a heavy underdog? Montel Jackson versus Rani Yaya. Mm, Montel Jackson is a heavy favorite as expected, but I think that line is also off. Montel should be minus two oh oh minus two five oh. Uh, Brogan Walker is minus I see Lucindo winning, but I think I'm only gonna have one bet for this card. Yeah, how does that sound? I think Pavlovich can defend Blades takedowns and smash him in the stand-up. Yes, yes, he can. Yes, of course, in stand-up he is way better. I think Pavlovich is the 
okay, he is not the best boxer. The best boxer is Aspinall, but after Aspinall, at 265, I believe Pavlovich is uh, I believe Pavlovich is the best guy when it comes to boxing at 265. But uh, I think he's got the most powerful strikes. Yeah, I do believe the guy has the most powerful strikes in the division. So, yeah, I do have a feeling he has the most powerful strikes when it comes to, to punches. Pozdrav, brat. Uh, well, that little Brazilian girl that was fighting is a great fighter on the UFC card Sunday. You really enjoy the Brazilian girl? Denise Gomez? Ah, Denise Gomez, the girl who pulled out a massive upset. Sutra. Sutra? Who misses Sutra? Čak stvarno ima utorak? Nisam znao, bre. Je. Ne, naravno ćemo ga, nisam znao da se borio sutra. S kime? A u subotu? A s kime? S kime? Na kom kardu? Nije mi zašla notifikacija. Na kom kardu? Šibni mi na Instagram to. Aj, molim te. Ne, 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 podržat ću naravno, samo mi šibni na Instagram, to nije mi zašla notifikacija za Babića. Bro, are you that ass? Of course. Who is the best western boxer I showed you, Vlad? The best western boxer. The best western boxer you showed is... Uh, how's his name? A lefty guy. A lefty guy you were sending. How's that lefty guy you sent? Važi, važi, proverit ću sad. Um, Steven, how's the, how's the name of that lefty guy you sent? Oh man, my brain blocked. The lefty guy. You sent me yesterday or the day before yesterday. Oh, the left-handed guy. You sent me a clip. Oh man, my brain blocked. I'm gonna scroll now. Pavlovich is good pick. I put my money on him. Me too. Uh, I'm gonna scroll your messages. Hold on. I'm gonna scroll your messages now. Errol Spence. Errol Spence. Thank you. Errol Spence. From what you've sent, Errol Spence. That's the guy. Sorry, my brain blocked. Hey, video some of a pro. Napravit ću predikciju. 185 on Babic, what do you think? Who is Babic fighting? Who is his opponent? I need to see who is he fighting. Nije mi zašla notifikacija uopšte. Lukas Razanski? I think Babic is gonna win that fight. I know who is Lukas Razanski, but the guy is overrated. Oscar, here Artur Špilka. No, Artur Špilka is an average guy. Eric Skalasnikov's average guy. Izlak Belgono, average guy. Eugene Buchmuller, average guy. Andras Čomar, I don't know the guy. Oskan Četinkaja, I don't know the guy. Only Artur Špilka is a very good fighter from those he fought, but I think Babic can win. Yes, I'm gonna go with him on the last card. Best MMA fighter I saw was Hojval or Gomes. Hojval for me on this card. Samo se borio u Poljskoj. Vrate, ne znam zašto je na Babić je tako visoka kvota, ovo nema nikakvog smisla. I think Babić can win 185, that's... Makes no sense to me, I think... Misliš da se ja ne bojim odluka? Babić can become the first Croat with WBC belt. Really? Croatia has never had a guy with WBC belt? Oh, I didn't know that. But you have tons of great boxers. Croatia has some of the greatest boxers. Favorite accent? Favorite accent is, believe it or not, Spanish. Spanish, it's very melodic. Spanish or Italian? I think Stipe Drvish. Yeah, but it's interesting. Croatia has tons of great boxers. I didn't know that you have never had a WBC champ. No, that's a surprise. I know that you have some... I mean, let's be honest, Croatia has the best boxers in Balkan Peninsula. Anybody can say whatever he wants. Like, you even have better boxers than Bulgaria. I'm just trying to be honest. Just trying to be honest. Drvish you. Aha. Go to talk to someone with a brain for fighting. Oh, thank you, man. It's always nice to talk to you, too. 
I mean, always nice to talk to you too. You are all, I'm telling you, you are my greatest support at the moment, especially since my leg is fucked up. Uh, da, 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 best Irish MMA up and comer. Up and comer, Ian Gary. Ian Gary. If you're going up and comer, Ian Gary, if you're talking about the previous fights, then you know who is. I mean, nobody going to overcome, uh, overtake McGregor because uh, the guy... The guy is a real celebrity, but uh, I think Ian Gary, Ian Gary is very much underrated. Ian Gary, I don't see anybody being better than Ian Gary, even in Bellator, even in other promotions. Ian Gary, 100% gonna be Ian Gary. And for me, it's Ian Gary too in the first place. I'm very much confident in uh, Ian Gary. I think Ian Gary can become top five in the division. Of course, the division is very, very dangerous, but so far he looked very dominant and his fight IQ was pretty much on point. So I believe he could he could pull it out. Yes, I believe Ian Gary could really pull it out. I believe Ian Gary could, uh, could do some damage and I believe he's going to make some noise in the days to come. Uh, for Alan Babich, I will make a prediction tomorrow. I really didn't know his fighting, so... I really didn't know he's fighting, but I think no distance gonna be my call. I haven't seen the notification. Interestingly, I'm following Alan Babich on uh, I'm following uh, Alan Babich on Instagram. Joyce was blocking punches with face. I heard South Pole didn't see it. I don't know why Joyce made so many mistakes. I rewatched uh, the highlights from the fight and I was like, really? I mean Zhile Zheng is a good boxer, but not that good. I think Joyce is too much, uh, how you say, one-sided. Joyce is having pretty much uh, one-sided style. You can't only jab your way through every single opponent. That's not going to work every single time. If you're trying to jab your way through every single opponent, you must be ready that somebody is going to read your style. When you're back on TikTok live with Bojkovic, I don't know. I don't know, maybe when he calls me. I don't know when he when he going to call me, not visit in Achille. Until I have cast on my life. Too stiff like Joshua, very stiff. See, when I remove this goddamn thing from my leg, I will go to Achilles. So, but this goddamn thing is gonna stay on my leg for a while. I have a goddamn cast on my leg, so I don't know for how long is it going to stay. Uh, too stiff like. Znaš li komu protivnik? Ne znam. Nažalost, ne znam. Speed recovery, thank you, thank you, fellow. Ne znam, nažalost, komu je protivnik, ali verujem da će uskoro objaviti. Samo je rekao protivnik je ubojica, ali ne znam, ne znam, stvarno. Best stretch for whole body. For whole body. The best stretch I like to perform is when you keep, when you sit on the floor, keep your legs wide, grab your, grab the tips of your toes, and uh, push your chest uh, towards uh, the bottom that works for whole body or uh, when you're hanging on the neckline do you know when you're hanging on the neckline like when you hang like this that also helps it also stretches some of the some of the greatest areas of the upper body and uh, previous exercises stretching every single muscle of the lower body so I am pretty much confident that these two drills should work nice on. No problem, man. You can ask whatever you want. I'm always eager to respond, especially, especially to a guy like you. One, I am always trying to be helpful, but uh, I will go. Man, I can't wait to, to get back to Achille, but with a goddamn cast on my leg, it will have to wait. There will be time. Can Tony Ferguson beat Kevin Lee fight is on prep? I hope he can, but I lost all the hopes in Tony Ferguson. Unfortunately, I lost all the hopes in Tony Ferguson because, let's be honest, Tony Tony's past his prime. Tony could have beat Khabib in his prime, but unfortunately, he is not in his prime anymore. He is just a shadow of what he used to be, and uh, I believe Tony's time to retire is now. 
one more fight in retirement. As a diehard fan of Tony Ferguson, I'm just saying that's it. His time is now. He should retire. His name is time is now. Može primiti puno što je problem. A mogu te ja pitati nešto? Kako ide u boksu sa tim sa tim usada kontra ovama? Jer ono, nikad nešto u UFC-u tačno znam šta ti uzimaju. Kako to ide u boksu? To jeste malo. Znam. Znam da je jako udara. Znam. Mada Babić ima kombo se bolje. Definitivno. Je li ima toga ti kontrolati? Islam Dakin, Benel Porrier will deal with him. Yeah, I think Benel Porrier would be a great fight. Definitely would be a great fight. I'm pretty much unsure how it goes with boxing. Those controls, it is see. I just hope this, these controls are uh, much more strict in uh, boxing. But, yeah, you are right. Kind of sucks to some point. Poirier will get gold. Ma bre, ima vremena koliko hoćeš, piši. Slobodno bre, piši, ima vremena koliko hoćeš. Vidjet kako mi je nogo u gipsu, vreme je jedina stvar koju imam, tako da... Šta, šta drugo ti kažem? Uh, Porrier will get gold, yes he will. Yes he will. I believe Porrier got a chance, he got a shot and uh, he earned some money against Conor McGregor, so look at his guard, what? It's hybrid Philly Shell. Uh, Porrier? Porrier is holding hybrid Philly Shell. Let me take a look. I'm going to take a look now. Spoiler stance. Hell it is. The heck it is. Yeah, it is a hybrid Philly. Heck, you're a geek, man. You really are a geek. I'm surprised with your level of knowledge, man. It is a hybrid, Philly. Wow. Do you think Ferguson and Pryor have a chance against Khabib? Yes, absolutely. Uh, their fight uh, was cancelled, uh, believe it or not, six times. Six times. Imagine that history. That fight was cancelled six times. Fight gods were not interested in that fight. I think Fight Gods definitely didn't want that fight to happen and uh, didn't want uh, that that fight to come to fruition. So for some reason that fight uh, was postponed and uh, yeah, it was postponed over and over and over. Khabib and the Tiramisu. Korean Zombie Adson Barbosa is a dream fight for me. For me too. I mean Adson Barbosa is gonna get back into title contention and uh, with this victory over Billy Carantillo. He is going to go into the top of the division. Song and Dong, Ricky Simon. I think Ricky Simon is going to win, but I would uh, test my luck with fight starts round three. But if I must pick a side, I would test my luck with Ricky Simon. Fight starts round three or over 2.5, as both of these guys are very much skillful to very much skillful cardio boys. Who we got on UFC for next stream, but uh, uh, we've got uh, Sergey Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. And we've got uh, Ricky Simon versus Song Yadong. That is going to be a nice card. Really much nice card. Gonna get underway at 9 p.m. Uh, UK time. And gonna last until 3. Uh, win good money in Francis Marshall and Karin Silva. Win good luck, fellow. I think I'm only gonna bet on Pavlovich this card. I don't have many other good bets. Honestly, all bets are tricky, but I will see. I think uh, I will only have one bet on this card. I usually have 3, 4, 5, but... This card looking so tricky. Boxer is going to steer us on pre post of Orbit, a cone I build at Crivain, pressed us with him and stirred up pre. That in a step on a knock to the Russian. Pada, Ima, Ima Smith, Latoyer, Naki, Substance, Nature, Stati, Akudu, Telu, Da, Mosher, the Sochestish, or the Dresden Substance, Pa. Sad ne znam, jer u sad ono može te posjeti kući, može, znaš, oni imaš ugovor da može ne najavlja da te posjeti, sad ovdje ne znam kako ste stvari. Ali ne znam kakva je politika, znaš, malo me ta politika buni, ali vidjet ću. 
Ovde su baš strogi. Ovde znači od 2014. čak su i TRT zabranili. Korean zombie have problem with fighters who have good volume. That is true. I think the announce do be good on UFC card. Stop it, please. When the UFC card is stacked with announce, it usually turns out to be good or one of the best. A, znam da je Canelo Pao na Clan Butaro, to znam. Curtis Blades is a favorite though. Yes, I know, that's why I'm gonna put some money on Pavlovic. Kad su pozitivni njihove mečeve se nadkazuju, nema prave kazne. Znam da je Pao na Clan Butaro, ali znaš šta je pojenta? Na Clan Butaro se teško pada. Ne, što jeste čudno, na Clan Butaro se jako teško pada. Da li možeš imati taj sastojak u životinskom mesu? Pa hipotetički gledano možeš. Ja znaš ti, što ne gore, možeš. Mislim, svi znamo da je koristio to, ali kažem, za klan butarola je dosta lako da odbraniš zašto si to uradio. Dok recimo za testosteron i epitestosteron ako narušiš, da vidjenje. Are you doing any Bellator predictions this week? There are two events. Yes, you have Bellator predictions. List my videos. I did, I have Bellator main card. And about the preliminary cards, they will be later, because I don't know, the preliminary cards are not official yet. But probably on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to do Bellator predictions. The whole cards, so far I have only main cards for Bellator 294 and 295. And you can check it out. I released the video, so... No props, fella. I'm always trying to go ahead of the time. I'm really, really trying as hard as I can. And uh, I'm willing, always willing to, you know, when I have time, I always publish. I don't have time every single day, but right now I just have too much of a time because since I hurt myself, everything I, I have is the time. Yeah, since I hurt myself, I, I just have too much time right now. I can perfect some aspects of the game, I can do more research, I can check uh, more fights, and... Uh, but I will tell you one thing, Lucia Pudilova, Lucia Pudilova was a heavy robbery. Lucia Pudilova versus Jocelyn Edwards was one of the heaviest robberies I've ever seen. Brutality of a robbery. No props, man. I hope you win some money. Ilya Topuria for goal too. Agree? Ilya Topuria is a championship potential. That was a robbery. Yeah, that was a heck of a robbery. Lucia Pudilova won round one and round two fair and square. We can argue that Jocelyn Edwards won round three, but I can accept. I would probably give her round three despite it was close. I would have given it to her, but it was a clear robbery. Like, it seems there are uh, more and more high judges on this, uh, on this fight card. And obviously... UFC needs to do something with judging because they are uh, discrediting the sport. They are heavily discrediting the sport with uh, these high judges. These high judges are uh, definitely ruining uh, the sport. I know that people want to see a good fight. It is see that fans want to see good fights, but you can't see good fights uh, when uh, there are tons of high judges. Like, there are tons of high judges, let's be honest. Majority of uh, judges seem to be high on the recent cards. On every single card we had controversial call. But this was too obvious robbery. Also, Marlon Vera versus Corey St. Hagen could have been an obvious robbery. Do you remember Dan Inge versus Barboza fight? That is the biggest robbery. Of course I remember that fight. There are many, many good examples of robbery, but uh, Barboza versus Ige was, uh, was one of the most horrible robberies too. Moj drug je pao na travu. Pada se na travu? Čekaj malo, zar marihuana nije na spisku dozvoljena? U UFC-u je dozvoljeno da koristiš marihuanu. Sad su dozvolili samo... Bilo je nekad u 24 sata da ne smeš od borbe i nakon borbe, a sad... Sad smeš, ne znam... Šta sad, pada se na travu kod nas? E vi što nisam znao? To stvarno nisam znao. Dobro, možda je u boksu drugačije. Is Alexei Alenik still fighting? Honestly, I don't know, Alexei Alenik is 44. 
I don't know whether he has a fight set or not. Alex Caceres ranked 15 in featherweight, yes. Yes, he is ranked 15, and that is a nice ranking. That is a pretty much nice ranking by Alex Caceres. Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul prediction. Jake Paul gonna smoke him out. Nate Diaz is a great MMA fighter. He has excellent boxing, but excellent MMA boxing. MMA gods don't want to see Nate Diaz win the fight. Judge is out of the bangers. Too many high judges. He got released, I think. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe he got released, maybe he didn't uh, get released. I really don't know. Jake Paul. Tough. Man, he defeated Anderson Silva, defeated Tyrone Woodley, now another UFC fighter. Let's go. Tony Ferguson is people champ. Will always be people's champ. Will always, always be people's champ. I'm always going to support him if uh, Tony Ferguson. Nate will come on late. Nate's cardio machine. I know Nate is going to come out late, but the problem with the problem child is the fact that he is not going to get tired. He might get, uh, he might start to guess in round six, seven, eight, but he's gonna win the first four or five rounds, and that's a problem with the judges. That really is a problem with these judges. Top five current favorite current fighters. Mm. Uh, 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 Holly Holm, Valentina Shevchenko, Edson Barboza, um, Luis Saldana, and uh, Veli Zheng. So Holly Holm, Valentina Shevchenko, Luis Saldana, Edson Barboza and Veli Zheng. I will be live for, for 8-9 more minutes, fellas. McNuggets. Ah, he is more of a trash talker. I mean, he is an entertaining guy, let's be honest. He knows to troll people and that's why people, that's why people love him. He is a master of trolling. Let's be honest, he is a master of trolling. He knows to troll people with style and that's the way it goes with uh, McNuggets. Douglas Silva and Raj is super underrated. Of course, Bruno Silva is very underrated. Bruno Silva ate all of the shots from Alex Pereira and stayed on his feet. Bruno Silva is very much underrated. Bruno Silva, the guy who fought uh, Alex Pereira, he ate all of Pereira's shots. He's got an iron uh, chin, you know. Judges are crackheads. Judges are high. Imagine this crack. Smoking crack. Before judging, smoking crack after judges. Yeah, tons of it coming up. Imagine that. Imagine tons of it coming up on from the mouth of those judges. How does that sound? Does that sound okay? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Too many crackheads coming up. Well, Javeli Zheng is a tank. Of course, she is a tank. She really is a tank. She is awesome. Just awesome. An awesome fighter she is. I got to support her. What is next for Adesanya? Uh, title defense? For sure it's going to be title defense against... Yeah, that's a good question. Against who? They are not going to run it back with Pereira. They are not going to run it back with Vitaker. I doubt they are going to run it back with Costa. Yeah, it's a good question. Maybe they could run it back with Vettori. I think they could run it back with Vettori. I would love to see that fight. Vettori is extremely technical. But I don't know, actually. That's a million dollar question. Who could be his next opponent? Chimov doesn't deserve a crack at the title. Jan Blavich in middleweight. If Jan Blavich cuts weight, then okay. 
the Andraj made it competitive against Tomar. Yes, I know that is true. Um, I believe. Uh, I believe uh, if Vlahovic uh, drops to middleweight, then they could run it back. But in that case scenario, Vlahovic is probably going to lose the fight. In that case scenario, I assume Vlahovic is going to lose the fight. So. I'm a big fan of Blavich, but imagine Blavich at 185. It, would have, it wouldn't be the real version of Blavich. It would have been Tanner Bowser version of Jan Blavich. And you've seen what happened to Tanner Bowser at 205. I just don't think Tanner Bowser belongs to 205. He's just too skinny, man. 230, 240 is a real weight class for him. Like, Don't cut so many pounds because it affects his cut, it affects his power. His strikes are not on point, not that powerful. Just trying not to be, not to criticize people, but just trying not to criticize people, but that deserves criticism. That thing definitely deserves criticism. Tanner Bowser's cut to 205 was horrible. It was one of the most horrible ideas that were ever made in uh, in the history of UFC, and I can't, uh, I cannot back it up. Simply, I cannot. I think he made a horrible mistake, and that horrible mistake ricocheted off his head. But when you make a mistake, it's it's usually too late when you make a mistake. When you make a mistake, there's no mysterious coming back, unfortunately. Yeah, there is no mysterious coming back when you make a mistake already. You can just dig yourself a deeper grave. What's good, what? Hello, King of NPCs. How are you doing, Phil? But I'm just saying, when you already make a mistake, you made it, and there is nothing much you can do. When the mistake is made, it's made. It's made. Only tonight I'm being a cowboy. Uh, three more minutes, fellas. Man, it's getting so hot with this being. I wonder how the MMA guru wears it, uh, wears it every single time. Belal versus Burns prediction. Fight goes the distance. If I must pick a side, go and go with Belal. Thought MMA Guru took some steroids and realized I wasn't on his channel. <laughs> ah, you're good. Kutelaba should be a middleweight. Only tonight I'm uh, wearing a beanie in the honor of the MMA Guru because the MMA Guru paid my medical treatment. So Kutelaba should be a middleweight, yes. He paid for my medical days and medical treatment, so this is in the honor of MMA Guru. I normally wear this or a hat. So I normally wear this thing or a hat. But only tonight I'm wearing a beanie. Only tonight. Azamat should be a middleweight. Yeah, Azamat could do well at middleweight, but his cardio is an issue, man. His cardio is a big issue. I'm worried about Azamat, man. His cardio is a big issue. Azamat's cardio is going to make him uh, a lot of problems. Because you've seen how he started to slow down against Jacoby in the third. And I was sweating hard, but thanks God he won two rounds. He broke his arm. I know, I know, but he started to significantly slow down against Jacoby. In round three, he was significantly slowed down. That's, yeah, he was more vulnerable. Yes, but he luckily won. Azamat needs to do something with his cardio, man, because imagine Azamat fighting in a five-rounder. He's going to get smoked by everybody. He needs to do something with his cardio, man. Feel bad for Lando Vanata. Me too. He lost to Daniel Zalhuber, and he's probably going to get to the list right now. And that's the only guy with two draws in the division. How brutal life can be sometimes. I think other guys can get finished uh, before the third Jacob is very durable. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I think Murzakano needs to improve his cardio, man. He needs to step it up. He needs to boost his cardio. Otherwise, he's going to get smoked by somebody with a good cardio, especially in a five-rounder. But only today I'm being a cowboy. Like only today. He might have KO Jacob in the third. He didn't throw one left that whole round. No. 
In round one, he came close to knocking him out. In round two, he dropped him. But in round three, I don't know, he was different in round three. It simply wasn't him, wasn't the best version of him. He might have okay with him. All right, fellas. Sam Alv is still fighting, yeah. I must go now to sleep. Jan Blavich is a nightmare matchup for him, it is. Must go now to sleep. I'm streaming already for one hour, 15 minutes. Tomorrow I'm going to prop you up for the UFC, for the upcoming UFC Vegas 71. And tomorrow, of course, we're going to continue the discussion. I think I'm going to have only one bet on Sergei Pavlovich, just to know. And I need to create some more bets to maybe having one interview tomorrow, just saying maybe we're going to see. Just going to say thank you for everything. Thank you for following me. Stephen Donnelly, thank you for the dono. I think he has, he has a chance against everyone else, to be honest. Jacob is a very hard matchup. It is. Catch you later, fellas. Thanks so much for the endless support. You will really rock. Night-night.